Welcome to Compute 175. In this video, I'm going to use the step in and step out buttons to debug a recursive function. So right here, I have this factorial function. So factorial is just, you know, when you get the factorial of 1, you get back the value of 1. When you do the factorial of 2, that's the factor that's 2 times the factorial of 1, so which is 2. And if you do the factorial of 3, that's 3 times the factorial of 2, which is 2 times the factorial of 1, which is 1. This method, this function, really lends itself to a recursive implementation, which is what I tried to write here. Problem is that it doesn't work. So let me demonstrate. So if I give it the number, oh, say 8, right? And I ask for the factorial of that number, let me go ahead and run this. It gives me back zero. So let me give it the let ask for the factorial of three. It gives me back zero. And if I ask it for the value of four, still giving me back zero. Okay, so I'm going to change that back to three. And I want to know what's going on here. So let's have a look at my recursive factorial function. So I know that in order to have make recursion work, I need to have a base case. So that's up here. That's where I'd simply return some value for the smallest possible version of the problem. And then I'll have a reduction step. And so what the reduction step will do is it will take the problem and it will make it smaller. Here, it just asks for the factorial of n minus 1. So eventually, we'll keep making n smaller and smaller and smaller. So it looks like this code is flawless, but let's run the debugger to see how that works in reality. So I'm going to actually, I'm interested in this line over here. So I'm going to put a breakpoint right there so that when I press the debugger, it's going to bring me straight to this line. OK. so. Right now, the debugger is paused on line 5. If we look at the call stack, we'll see that it was called from main with the number 3. And therefore, here, our factorial, if we look at the stack data, we'll see that n is also 3. So there is this call to factorial. And it's a recursive call. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to press step in to see how that recursive call actually works. So now we're into this function. And here we can see that n is 2. So the function call over here got pushed onto the stack. Here we have the factorial of uh, 3, which is the original thing we called it with. Here we have the factorial of 2. So is n equals 2 is 2 less than 1? No, it's not. So we're going to go ahead. So when I step over, it should bring me to the reduction step. OK, so now it's going to call factorial of n minus 1. n minus 1 is 1. So if I step into that function, you'll see my call stack is a bunch of function calls to factorial. And at the end, I have a factorial of n minus 1. So is n equals 1 less than 1? No, it's not. So I'm going to step over to my reduction step and it's going to call factorial of n minus 1. So if I step into, I'll get into, I'll push another function call onto the call stack. In this function call, we'll see that n is 0, right? Because in the previous function call, n is 1. In the previous function call, n is 2. In the previous function call, n is 3. So if we go all the way back to the current position in the stack, the most recent position in the stack, we'll see that, OK, n is 0, right? So is 0 less than 1? Yes. So we'll go to, we'll step over, and we should be at the base case. So excellent. What I saw is that the reduction step successfully reduces the problem, making n smaller and smaller, and I eventually reach the base case. So here I'm at the base case. So it says, OK, I'm going to return n. So it's going to return 0 because n is 0. So now 
I've reached the bottom of this, the, the recursion. I am at the base case. That means I can now step out. And when I step out, I go back to this factorial of 1. And I see that, OK, the previous value is 0. And it's going to return n times the previous value, which is 0. So 1 times 0, that's going to be 0. So I think I see the problem here. So just in case, I'm going to step out and see how that works again. So I'm going to pop a value from the call stack. So now I'm in factorial of 2. So the previous value it got was 0, so n, so 2 times 0, is 0. So if I step out, the pattern continues. I'm just going to do 3 times 0. And if I step out, it runs this print, this, uh, print function and says, 3 factorial is 0. OK, so I think my error here is in the base case. Whereas when n is smaller than 1, I, what I should really should be returning is 1 before I was returning n, which happened to be 0. So 0 times anything is 0. Eventually, I got 0 times 1 times 2 times 3, which gave me 0 at the end. So change that to 1. And I'm actually going to put a breakpoint here at line 3, just so that I can see that it reaches the base case. And I'm going to run it. OK. So I ran it. It's paused when it reached the base case here, where it says return 1. And we can see the call stack has a number of calls to factorial. Over here, if we look at the stack data, we'll see that n is 0. It's going to return 1. Over here, we have n1, here we have n equals 2, and here we have n equals 3. So all of these, so the factorial of n equals 1 called the factorial of n equals 0. So if we step out of it, we return back to the factorial of n equals 1. So it does n, which is 1, times the previous, which is also 1. So it returns 1. So let's step out pop that from the call stack. And we see n is 1, or sorry, n is 2 times the previous, which is 1. OK, so once again, I'm going to pop that from the call stack. This, look, this is starting to look right. So n is 3 times the previous, which is 2. OK, so I think I fixed this function. So what I did is I did step over so I can see what's going to return. It's going to return 6. So if I finally step out and run the rest of the program, it gives me 3 factorial 6, which is the correct answer. So OK. What ended up happening here is I used the debugger to step into recursive invocations of factorial to see where things went wrong. And where things went wrong is that I was returning the wrong thing from my base case. So it the reduction step eventually did reach the base case, but turns out what the base case returned was incorrect. It always returned 0. Therefore, any times I did 10 or n times the previous, I would always do n times 0, therefore giving me 0 at the end of the function. But now it returns the right thing. The actual mathematical definition of factorial is if n is equal to 1 or if n is equal to 0, then return 1. So that's pedantically the definition of factorial. Then it should return 1. I'm just going to get rid of that because this ends up doing the same thing for non-negative integers. So I'm going to run this again with, uh, let's get the factorial not of 24, but the factorial of 4. So calculate 4 factorial. Excellent. So it gives me 4 factorial of 24. Let's give it maybe a more ambitious number, like 8. So good, it gives me a bigger and bigger number. Let's try the factorial of 10. Good. So now we see it's working. It's not giving me the result of 0 for every factorial. And I was able to figure out that I had a problem in my base case by using the step in functions to step all the way down to the base case using the debugger.